These stories are from a female's perspective. It had been a while since I had been out with a guy, and I was desperate for a date. I had been swiping left and right on various dating apps for weeks with no luck. I am not an ugly girl by any means. I was just having a stroke of bad luck. I would connect with guys, but something would always go wrong. A lot of them were just looking for a quick hookup, and that's not what I was after. I wanted to actually connect with a guy through conversation on a deeper level. I understand it can be tough for guys to think like that, but I was holding out. When I finally connected with a guy named David, I was thrilled. David was very good looking, maybe too good to be true. People lie all the time about their pictures, so this could be fake. We agreed to meet at a trendy bar in our downtown for drinks, and I couldn't wait. I arrived early and waited patiently at the bar, sipping on my drink and checking my phone every few minutes. Finally, David arrived, and I was immediately struck by how handsome he was. We sat down and started chatting. I was pleasantly surprised by how witty and charming he was. He was so fun to talk to, and I really enjoyed his attitude towards things. He could not be bothered by the mundane details of life and had the best solutions for maintaining a healthy mental state in this crazy world of information overload. But as the night went on, things started to get a little strange. David began to share increasingly disturbing stories about his ex-girlfriends and his failed relationships. No, it's not that he was the victim. He was actually the perpetrator. He talked about how he cheated on every one of them and how he had no remorse for his actions. Was this a joke? I tried to laugh it off, thinking he was just joking, and changed the subject, but he kept bringing it back up. I started to feel uneasy and uncomfortable, but I didn't want to be rude and leave. A few things were going through my mind. Does this guy think he's being funny? Is he so egotistical that he thinks I like him more because he's able to have such control over women? Is he dumb or is he crazy? As the night wore on, David's stories became more and more disturbing. He told me how he used to get his ex-girlfriends drunk and take advantage of them. He even bragged about how once he had slipped a girl something and taken pictures of her unconscious body. This was the last straw. I couldn't listen to any more of this. I was horrified and couldn't believe what I was hearing. I knew I had to get out of there as soon as possible. I waited for the right time and excused myself to the bathroom and then snuck out the back door. David tried to call me, but I blocked his number. I never heard from him again. He must have moved on to the next girl. Sometimes in conversation, people say crazy, off-the-wall things. Maybe sometimes what they're saying is true. It was a hot summer day when I decided to go out on a date with Jim, a guy I had just met at a conference and later found on Instagram. He seemed charming and cute in his profile picture. We had chatted a little bit, but not enough to really get to know each other. We were working on connecting face to face for the first time. However, as soon as I met him in person, I knew something was off. We decided to meet at a trendy coffee shop, and I was happy as it was nice and public. I showed up on time and looked around to see if Jim was there. I did not see him at all. I got a table and sat down. I would order a coffee until he arrived. I'm sure he would want to order together, plus that would maybe break the ice a little bit. As I was sitting there, I began to be curious every time I saw a guy come into the shop. The situation was starting to irritate me though. He was already a half an hour late. When he finally arrived, he was sweating and out of breath. He sat down across from me and immediately started talking about how he had been lost on the way. It was hard for me to understand how someone could be that lost when everyone has GPS on their phones. Getting lost is kind of an old excuse. I tried to be understanding, but something about his demeanor made me feel uneasy. He kept fidgeting and looking around the room as if he was expecting someone to show up. He was acting pretty paranoid. We ordered our drinks and tried to make small talk, but every time I asked him a question, he seemed to dodge it or give a vague answer. He also kept checking his phone, which was vibrating nonstop. It was very distracting, and it was a constant bother during the date. The constant vibration was similar to having a third person on the date, and not a person that you wanted to be there. It was very distracting, 
As the date went on, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. My instincts were telling me to leave, but I didn't want to be rude, so I decided to give him one more chance. We left the coffee shop and walked to a nearby park to sit on the bench and chat. As soon as we sat down, Jim's phone started ringing again. This time, he answered it. I could hear the person on the other end yelling and cursing at him. Jim tried to call the person on the phone down, but it was clear that it was a heated argument. I couldn't understand everything that was being said, but I knew I didn't want to stick around for any of the drama. I stood up and told Jim I needed to go home. He begged me to stay, saying that he was in the middle of a family emergency and needed someone to talk to, but I did not feel like I could trust him and I didn't want to be caught in the middle of his problems. As I was walking to my car, I took a different route from what we had taken from the coffee shop to the park, so Jim would not be able to follow me. I also took a route through some shallow woods rather than sticking to the sidewalk. As I was walking, I could clearly see the main street. I saw a suspicious car driving around, and it had a spotlight on it. It was shining it around the area, looking for something. I got really nervous suddenly and hid behind a tree. What were they looking for? As the car passed, I stepped slightly out of the woods and peeked around the corner to where it was going. I saw it go to the park where I was just at with Jim. The car parked and three big guys came out of the car and walked directly to Jim. I couldn't hear what they were talking about, but all I could hear was, where is the girl? Jim pointed in the direction of the coffee shop and one of the big guys punched him in the stomach. He went down hard. After seeing that, I ran as fast as I could to my car. I got in and I sped off. I reported the incident to the police. It turns out there was a string of kidnappings in the area involving four guys. There was a car to keep a lookout for which matched a description of the car with the spotlight. It turns out that Jim would lure pretty girls to a date, then take them to the park where the three guys would overpower the girl and get them into their car. The girl would never see their friends again and would be part of a trafficking ring. I feel lucky that I narrowly escaped a terrible situation. I'm thankful that I still have my freedom, if not even my life. Make sure you listen to your gut instincts. Your gut might know what's going on before you do. It was a typical Saturday night when I decided to try my luck with online dating. I had spent the entire day scrolling through profiles messaging potential matches, and finally, I landed a date with a guy named Jack. We decided to meet at a popular bar in the city. As I walked in, I immediately saw him sitting at the bar. He was tall, dark, and handsome, just like his profile promised. I walked over and introduced myself, and he stood up to give me a hug. I had just met this guy, and he was already giving me a big hug. That was kind of weird. Can I get to know you first before we make personal contact, or at least you invade my personal bubble? As he released from his too soon but warm hug, his hand drifted down my back and grazed my butt, but just barely. Still, he went there and I noticed. So we sat down at the table and started making small talk, but things only got worse as the night went on. Jack kept making inappropriate comments. He would talk about how my shirt was so tight fitting on me and could see all of my features, things like that. When he said that, he would look at my chest and stare at me in a creepy way. It is nice to be wanted, but this guy was drooling over me pretty hard. I understand why he was staring as I have some bigger boobs with some cleavage showing. I typically do get a lot of looks. However, there was something in his eyes though that made his staring very unsettling. I tried to laugh it off, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was not right about him. As we were finishing our drinks, Jack suggested that we go back to his place. I quickly declined, saying I had an early morning the next day. He seemed disappointed, but I was relieved to be getting out of there finally. I was uncomfortable with him in a public place, so I was not about to be alone with him privately. I said, I had fun, but I need to get going. He went in for another hug, and I put my hand out and said, I don't do hugs. This is not a lie. I am not a very affectionate person. Maybe this will change someday, but for now, no hugs. I said goodnight and turned around to leave. As I was leaving, Jack grabbed my arm hard and leaned in close, his hot breath on my neck. You're not really going home, are you? He whispered. 
I know you want to come back to my place. I pulled away and smashed the closest bottle over his head. As he was writhing in pain, I walked out the door and left him there bleeding. Don't grab me like that or you'll regret it. Now Jack knows more about me. That was the last time I ever tried online dating. When you're in a desperate mood, when you're feeling lonely, you only attract others in desperate moods as well. Do your best not to be desperate. It turns out Jim would lure girls 